okay so a long time ago in 2016 i believe i had a video about how to change your device's api level back to your default uh, that means if you accidentally change your device's api level you can switch back to your default uh, by editing it uh, i showed it uh, with rv text editor and apk tool and uh, many people commented that uh, those methods for some people almost 90 percent it will work but there are some exceptions and there are some worst scenarios and in those scenarios what i recommended is that if you have adb installed in your system you can plug your phone through a uh, usb cable and access adb shell and uh, mount system partition and uh, yeah that then pull your build property file and push it back now many people are many people got confused by it and uh, and the point of this video and i have to make a few things clear here and there are uh, many ways to set up adb shell to access adb shell and uh, in this video i want to mention two ways that you can access adb shell the first way is of course connect your um, system with your android with usb cable and then the second method is actually there are three methods that is that i'm going to mention the first method is connecting via usb cable that's that's the traditional method and the next thing is that as i already mentioned adb shell is throwing a shell where you can execute commands now uh, the example now right now i'm not root okay i'll change it my shell to root now right now i'm a root user and what i can do now is uh, whenever you have to execute a command in adb shell you would have to do adb shell uh, pm for package manager uh, if you don't know pm is a package manager for android you can change the way you install applications and you can do some other things good things with uh, you know change the default uh, installation path many other things okay uh, and uh, yeah this is how you uh, execute a command using adb shell but if you do have your system rooted and if you have root access like i do i have root shell so i can just execute pm directly so you can avoid adb shell and then execute the command directly uh, and the best example that i can show you is to make you understand is that uh, so right now uh, this is a command for uh, making our any application full screen uh, using adb shell command now as i already mentioned you do not need adb shell command because we are in a root shell okay now uh, let me make Termax full screen here, which is what I'm using right now. So, as you can see, my Termax is now full screen. And uh, God, uh, there is immerse a soft keyboard problem here with Termax. Uh, for making this happen, you have to change the source code. Uh, let me turn off this. Okay, right now I'm back. Now, uh, the point of this video is to make you understand there are many ways to execute adb commands adb shell commands in your android this is the first method and as i said pm and uh, am for activity manager uh, you can do that you can execute almost every single command uh, available in adb shell using your android terminal emulator if you have root access okay perfect and then the next method is to have uh, adb daemon running so in my case i do have an example so this is the android um, documentation uh, about adb shell so they are saying we can execute uh, adb shell am start uh, dash a whatever activity manager so in our case we don't need this adb shell right here we can avoid that and we can execute am start dash a uh, then the rest but if you do have adb shell if you're connected you're connected to your android with you know 
by using a TCP socket or you or you have connected through USB then you can execute like this okay now this is all about how you can execute uh, ADV shell commands in your terminal emulator and then the next way is uh, this is Android Android's Google's recommendation of ADB daemon so ADB daemon is another method that you uh, with which you can uh, execute the same ADB shell commands uh, with a TCP if, if you connect to the TCP socket created by this daemon then you can execute almost all the same commands and that's the same shell but with a TCP socket and that's convenient if you are in a LAN connection or if you are connected to a Wi-Fi network. Um, uh, there is an example here. I, uh, yeah, there you go. So you would create, you would run ADBD, ADBD, and there are few flags that you have to pass along with this. And once you create this ADBD man, what you can do is you can connect go ahead and connect to this a TCP socket uh, from any system uh, within your uh, LAN or if you have NAT rules you can connect from outside <laughs> that's that's out of the scope okay you can uh, connect to this ADB shell uh, with, from any device okay so there you go tcp then the ip address and the port and then you can execute the adb commands so i mentioned three methods to execute adb shell commands in your android and uh, using tcp socket and you know using usb cable now i made this video specifically for those folks struggling to uh, fix their API level back to default now I know most of the people uh, fixed it but you know some people had a question about this so I wanted to clear this up now yeah this is it this is how we execute I said many times okay so that's the point of this video I hope you found this helpful and uh, yeah that's it thank you. thanks for watching